Stack Podcast. This episode is sponsored by Chill Tech, a leading provider in high quality American made LED lights. If you're tired of dealing with low quality LEDs that fail to deliver, well, then you need to check out Chill Tech's state of the art LEDs. These lights are engineered to deliver superior performance and energy efficiency, making them the perfect choice for any home grower. Their commitment to excellence is reflected in every product they produce. So whether you're looking for better efficacy or just to upgrade the build overall, make sure you check out Chilled Tech. They got the perfect solution for you. Visit fromthestash.com slash LED and use discount code thestash15 at checkout to save yourself a little bit of money on a new Chilled Tech LED. Thanks to our sponsors, AC Infinity. Looking for an easy way to improve air circulation in your grow tent? Well, check out AC Infinity's clip-on oscillating fan. It's compact and can easily be attached to your tent poles, providing targeted airflow exactly where you need it. With 10-speed settings and automatic oscillation, you can customize the fan's airflow to suit your plant's needs at different stages of growth. And because it's IP44 rated, it's resistant to high humidity and heat, perfect for your grow environment. These oscillating clip-on fans can also be connected to your Controller 6 9 Pro to be able to have everything dialed in perfectly for your garden. If you want to upgrade your grow tent today, make sure you get that clip-on oscillating fan from AC Infinity. And don't forget to use discount code thestash 15 at checkout to save a little extra on your purchase. Yeah, that's a good question, though. At what point do you rename something? You know, some people are like, I'm smoking G- GSC crossed with blueberry fire OG crossed with uh, Skittles. I'm like, oh, yeah. Jesus, does that have a name <laughs> or what? He's like, no, I just told you its name. I'm like, well, like that deserves a name. Or like the chill out OG, the last one that I grew versus the one I grew now are dramatically different. The one that came out now is very piney like mm. dramatically piney versus the other one was a little more floral with the pine and spice to it. But like this one, if you smoked them side by side, you didn't look at the plant, you'd totally not think it's the same shit. So if I describe this to somebody and I called it chill at OG, they'd be like, that's not chill at OG, but like, this is a particular phenotype and an expression that came from it. So that's where I feel like it almost would make sense to rename that, but say it's a cut of this, like white truffle is a cut of gorilla butter, but nobody says that often. They just say white truffle. But there should be a some sort of clarification because phenotypes, you know, those those unique characteristics, I feel like need to be expressed when somebody's purchasing it or when they're getting a cut or when they're going to buy the flower. They're like, hey, is this the same? Is this that same cut? Like, how else do you describe it by just saying that cut? Well, let's put it this way. Every other company or marketing brand has figured it out. You know, it's like how many brands have of, of pop Coca-Cola are there out there? There's Coca-Cola cherry, Coca-Cola vanilla. Coca-Cola diet, Coca-Cola, just, just keep the name, add the expression, right? So it's like, if it, if it's, if it's, if it's stretchy, you know what I mean? Then, okay, this is GSC long legs. Okay. Or, you know, if it's got really good, something that's really speaking to the, 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 the lemon or the, you know, something, then it's like, okay, well, this is Girl Scout cookies, you know, sour or girl like i i do think there was a time where we did do that but now it's it's just gone so far down the lane of just like let's just call it something so far let's come up with the craziest name possible and then a- add it to the label that's that's kind of where we're at because we've got stupid stupid names now dude even with like again with white truffle i'm like how does gorilla butter turn into white truffle you know what i'm saying like if you were to go yep. get uh gorilla butter uh, order those seeds. Like I remember, shout out to the homie Kurt. He sought them out at uh, the Cannabis Cup a few years ago. Well, now like six, seven years ago. It's a while. And he searched hard, found the ones, never found the same phenotype. It was comparable, but it was really, really mild, wonky grower. And so, you know, fast forward to today, to, to today, no one says Gorilla Butter. They say White Truffle. So are we re- like just going to rename Gorilla Butter as White Truffle? You know what I'm saying? Or are people just misidentifying cultivars? It's hard to tell. You mentioned the chill out OG kind of having different phenotypes. I'm trying to remember if you got the F1s, F2s, or F3s. F2. I grew the F1s first. It, these ones are F2s that I got. So that makes perfect sense for yep. why. And, and, you know, that's one of the things. There's so much debate when it comes to people saying, oh, you shouldn't release F1s. People who are only doing that cross that first generation, then releasing it, you shouldn't do it because there's no stability in it. Right. And that's one of the things that I became aware of. And then I was like, Oh, you you know, I think you're right. So let me continue to breed this. Let me continue to stabilize it, moving it down generation to generation F2. Now I'm on F3. It's looking pretty good so far. 
And um, as far as not making prior generations available, I've kind of changed, you know, I, I kind of lean towards not just keeping it as F3s. You know, I'm thinking about do, releasing the F1s and F2s along with the F3s. That way, there's just so much that can come out of it. You know what I mean? And if somebody doesn't like the F3 that I created, you know, what comes out of that? Well, they can go back a generation and go back two generations in order to hunt through that and find what they're looking for and then use that on their cross. And that's one thing I'm going to encourage people once they do get their hands on the Chill OG is use it to cross your own strains. You know what I mean? That would be a huge honor if people were to do that, if they take my, something I created and then use it in their projects and all of a sudden there's, you know, they find something what they like, obviously, off the, the cultivar, use it in their projects. And all of a sudden they're starting to see see what they're looking for out of that project. Um, so, yeah, I know somebody asked about the Chill OG in the, the chat here. It's coming very soon. I'm working behind the scenes right now to get it out ASAP. So hang tight That's here. Like I'm not really sure how I'm going to do it. I'll ever. probably, yeah, I'll probably announce it on he- here on, on From the Stash and maybe my own Twitter. I don't really know how I'm going to go about doing that, but um, Jesus, good it's luck, coming out man. soon. It's coming out very I soon. Can't wait until all the bots pick up that scam. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, but but let it be frank. Let it be frank. You're going to hear it from his mouth first. You're not going to hear it from some dot grow it dot WhatsApp dot. Dash. You know, I'm no, never no. going to do transactions gonna over come, Instagram. There's, it's going to come from his mouth. Hit me up on five different ground. fake Instagram accounts. For those that are new and don't know about this, there's five different Instagram accounts that are fake under my, uh, like claiming to be me. And they sell people right seeds. Now. And they do the same things with pigeons, same thing with Rob. So don't ever buy seeds through somebody on Instagram because most likely it's, it's an impersonator. It's not actually them. It is. Yeah. 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 So uh, I'm not going to ever probably breed my own. I just don't see doing it. Like, it's not something I'd like to do. There's so many out there that I'd already rather try to grow that somebody else already did, you know, and I'll, I'll wait for Chris to make something new too. But uh, if you ever see something from me, it's totally fake. I don't think they make nothing. Yeah. Just put um, that out there. It should be obvious. But Rob doesn't sell seeds or lights. Right. right. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Hmm. But yeah. So we, just to dial back there, when you talked about the debate of whether you should release F1s or not. Um, I, I totally think you should, and 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 I not only do I think you should, th- I think the issue is is that you you charge an exu- exuberant amount of money for F ones and F twos. Uh, that's the issue, in my opinion. Sorry, that that's the problem is that you're getting an F one and it's costing you you know upwards of fifty to a hundred dollars a seed, which is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so so that's you know if you're gonna have an F three, I'm paying for the stability. I'm paying for those expressions. I'm paying for that phenotype type that's what i want i see it i want it i do that when i buy a nike shoe it's like i'm getting it because i know exactly what i'm getting every single time right so it's like that's what the f3 is but would that be that you know you you can go to you know an f1 and and start to dial in to find something you like well of course you know you can customize your own nike shoes too you can go online and get you piece it together sole by lace by tongue by you know name it but then yeah i just don't think that you should pay way more money for you know, it should be like a there should be like a pay scale. You know what I mean? Like it should go up based on F one, F two, F three. In price, That's an interesting perspective. I yeah. also to to you know my my needle on whether I would I will breed or not breed. You know, is slow. Like it's it's starting to flutter over here, man. Because it's like when I hear Chris starting to, t- and not just Chris, we've had a, an incredible amount of very passionate people in regards to breeding. And when people, when they talk about it, man, they get so excited and their their passion is just, their eyes light up. You know what I mean? I'll tell you what my eyes don't light up for going organic. Okay. But they do light up for, for possibly breeding. So, so I'm like, you know what, you know what? I I could possibly see myself dabbling someday because I like the idea of taking something somebody worked on and putting my own spin on it, you know? Yeah, you're so, a creator. It, it makes sense, you know, being a creative person to be able to create another expression of art, so to speak, is cool. Yeah. Myself, nah, I'm years, you I'm, can clip this. Yeah, no, years no, away. No, no, no. <laughs> what I, I do have a little, I wouldn't say a, a twinkle, I've got almost a tear in my eye, is I am fully converting 100% organic. And it's not because I'm like, oh, it's better. It's because I really don't have a choice. All of the grocery stores around me have shut down now. 
Mm. All of them. There's none local to me at all. I'd have to drive a couple hours to get to a grocery store or pay a bunch for shipping for soil. So it's time making the switch. It's unfortunate, man. Places that have been open for 20 years are closed because now it's like how many uh, brewing stores do you guys see? What do you even call that? I've got a, a, a home brewery. craft brew store. Craft um, brewery. Yeah, yeah. brew stores. Brew yeah, we have you, a cup. We have some. You do? All right. So I guess yep. I take my statement back. There's none that I've ever seen in my life. So yeah, believe it or not, there. they're they're like if, if you Google brewery or like a brew craft brew, they're actually typically holes in the wall. Like there are these tiny little you wouldn't even know it. Like ours is like between two like we got a few and they're like between two brick buildings and you, you walk in all of a sudden, boom, there's a distillery. It's like holy f- and they've got like a little little place where you can order beer up front and stuff like that. So yeah, it's surprising, actually. I, I had no idea. Yeah. So. I think I think I think uh Rob was talking about actual like home brew stores. Supplies. Like, where like they home sell the supplies, supplies for home brewing. So like not, the equipment, the, not the craft barley, all the beer. I can think of bars. one. Okay, okay. I can think of one off. I don't even know what to call it. A brew store? And yeah, there's probably one in, in GR there it makes sense because we it's like beer city USA. But for the most part, my point is, my long ass point is few and far <laughs> between. We really had to think this one out. Okay. <laughs> there's <laughs> there grocery stores everywhere. And now there's none. So I've got to just be self sufficient if I want to be able to maintain my home grow because it's not gonna work if I've got to wait for soil. And I've had times where I've ordered soil and I've had bugs in it. So I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna have to reuse. I've already got part of my garden is organic. But my main larger garden is synthetic. So I've changed it up. Not the end of the world, but it just it's sad to see so many stores closing. But you go in there and the door swings have dropped. The main thing is, is it just shows majority of growers were not in it for the plant. They were in it for the profit. It just is a fact, period. And end of discussion. Because the ones that I know who were doing it for, they were just growing for fun or whatever, because they like to, they still are growing. And they still buy shit. And they still go. But the rest, they were doing it because they were getting $200 a Z and making money. And once it's not financially lucrative, they just quit quit doing it. Outdoor season is it. So the only time you see people coming in is outdoor season. And they buy a shitload of soil, some newts, and they don't come back. And it's it's sad to see, man, that the passion has uh, dwindled because of the profit has dwindled. You know? I, think, I think, too, like, the internet makes things so easy, man. Um, like, Amazon... You, you Americans can get stuff delivered to your door within like hours. Yeah. You know, it's funny because like I go to Vegas and Chris is like, oh, we can order this. It'll be here by like this evening. I'm like, are you serious? I wait weeks for things. So it's like, anyways, you know, it's easy for some people to just, it, rather than go to a grocery store, you can go online, order it for a fraction of the price, have it shipped to your door in just a few days, and you're satisfied. You know, we've always, for a long time, we've always said, you know, support local, support local, go to your local grocery store, g- get stuff from them, you know, but it comes to a point where they're trying to mark things up to a point where they can keep their doors open too. And that markup is the difference between someone who's going to shop online versus someone who's got to go to the grocery store. And, you know, I'm guilty of it too. Online is easy because I can get everything, not just no name stuff that they can only have access to, you know? So, yeah, I think, yeah, it's tough. It's It's definitely a thing. But then, like, you know, shout out to the homies, but they're closing their store and then everything is 60% off. So I'm like, I know they're not taking a loss. I mean, they're taking a loss. High margins. At least come wow. cost. I'm just like, did they have some pretty decent margins, man? You know, and they might have been able to be more sustainable had it not been such a cash grab initially, and it was more affordable. And you were like, well, shit, I can get my bill as well for twelve bucks. And you can from some places. You know, there's there's oh, still places in Northern Michigan that got bucks. literally, dude. And there's other places that are charging you forty. That's for what I'm paying. Bagel. That's so what I'm it's paying. Like, you, you got to look at the uh, again profit or or passion and it's got to be a fine line because it's a business you have to pay taxes and all these things i get it but it really sucks and it hurts for the community and the people who are trying to be able to grow because you you don't have a place now and that was a place to kind of get information and congregate and show your product off a little bit and it just things changed in the last you know really since the pandemic it exploded and everybody thought they were like man we're doing great and then all of a sudden they really see the difference as it's dropped off instead of it being just like oh well it was really high then and it's kind of lowered it was whoosh, and then whoosh, because between dispensaries charging $50 for a Z is some garbage 
to uh, people not buying the product to everybody also going back to work, it's really changed the game. And then more and more and more people are learning about growing organically and they're ditching the bottle. So nutrients aren't selling. And the only thing that is is soil and the, mar the margins aren't nearly as good for soil as they are for like nutrients. So it's, it's just a trip to see, man. Place I've gone to since I started growing. Shut down. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm actually looking on maps for my city and I looked up homebrew stores. It was about four or five of them. And then here, hydroponic stores, more than double. It was like 12 of them in my city. Yeah. So it's like, for but they're closing down. I, th I think a lot of these people, what they're doing also is you see the transition from just starting off with the brick and mortar store, right? In person. Then you see some folks transition to online sales as well. So they're doing both the brick and mortar locally as well and as the online mortar. sales. Now we're seeing some companies that just going, they're seeing most of their sales are coming online and they're shutting down their brick and mortar, right? So they're just online entirely. So those brick and mortar stores that haven't transitioned to online, like I know um, it took Grow Generation a while, I, I feel like, to actually shift their operation to sell things online. Um, you know, they're very well known across the US. They have several locations. I mean, they're even a public company, they have a stock that you can buy. Um, and they've been expanding like crazy over the years. I think they actually just reported like a 26% loss over the quarter or whatever, but something along those lines. But anyways, um, yeah, they just transitioned over to online. So, uh, you know, not too long ago. So we'll see what happens there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, going back to what you like, people frown upon, okay, you're buying online, you're not buying things locally. Right. But the ease of use, like Pigeon said, it's just, it's so easy to just click a couple buttons while right here, right on home and then get something delivered to you within a matter of a day or two. I mean, shout out to Happy Hydro. They're a US based company. They're based in Buffalo and they ship across the US. I think they ship internationally as well, but they have shipping to where you can get something on the other side of the US in one to two days. So they do have super fast shipping. So yeah, you don't have to be in Buffalo to buy from them, although you can actually stop by their area there and buy stuff. But uh, it's just so convenient these days to just get, get things shipped. Now, yeah, of course, it's not good for the environment, right? It's shipping things across the U.S., but yeah, that's what everything everybody's transitioning to, you know. And well, too, like Rogen, like we it, we saw that such. I'm looking at the my, my massive loss that I had in <laughs> in my shares here. But uh, before the pandemic hit, it was three dollars and seventy eight dollars, three dollars and seventy eight cents per share. Pandemic came, it was up to fifty six dollars ninety five cents. Now. It's as low as three dollars seventy eight cents. So it's 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 clear as day that the biggest spike came from the pandemic. More people home, free money. Uh, you know, herb is essential in most states and most areas. It's an essential business. So it was this this shit blew up. But it's crazy to see how fast it dropped. I mean, it literally as soon as pretty much an announcement that the the demic is chilling down. I mean, just plummeted. <clears throat> that's a cookie cutter thing man that happened on so for so many companies and it, it, it's fair to note too and i've said this before that the green rush is very similar to the gold rush in that everybody rushed in to get a piece of this pie and people didn't realize that you actually needed to know something about it to profit from it and 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 you know when people rush to alaska for gold they didn't realize a you had to dig for it it was really hard to dig frozen tundra and b it's frozen freezing it's really hard to live up there so people died you know uh they couldn't figure it out so then it's there was a, there was a wind a dwindling in numbers same thing for the green rush man everybody and their dog tried to get in on this it was the, the canadian um example is 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 rife with people and investors that got in this that knew absolutely nothing about this product the, the way that it grows the climate that it requires the stages of growth when to harvest or n anything and essentially you're seeing a, a dropping off you know I, I covered this with the the led companies everybody and their dog has an led company and what do you know even good quality led companies are falling to the wayside because they cannot move and adapt can't change they're not overcoming the 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 hurdles that are being presented and so that's the same thing with these garden stores. Everybody got in with a garden store. Everybody did. Hell, I was even going to start my own garden store. I filed a name. I had the whole thing and uh, saw the light. I was like, holy, f no, thank you. But the problem is, is that a lot of people haven't. So you're going to see a natural drop off in people that 
can't keep up with the times and whether it's 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 your example of of you know people uh, the the dying off of the illicit market and people not in it for the or that are in it for cash are gone or it's the fact that uh, people are going online like whatever it is whatever it is it's it's leading to less grow stores so yeah that's crazy this reminds me of the 2018 farm bill remember when CBD became legal uh-huh. Uh-huh. I actually had a buddy I was working uh, working a nine to five at that time and uh, he actually had a farm he was just starting up right before the farm bill get, went into effect so he was like the, one of the first guys to kind of get into it uh in Pahrump, the next the next town over and um he ended up work, working out great to begin right so he was the farmer he was selling to people who did the processing um and then he had his own processing facility that he started up and then he had his own brick and mortar like store and that dropped off so quickly. I was shocked by it. He was in and out of there like a robbery. I mean, it was like the store opened and then months later the store closed because it was just no sales. He ended up sh- shutting down his processing facility and like his CBD. I mean, whoosh, it just came crashing down, I feel yeah, like. It got so saturated. Just like, I mean, same with our, our legal adult use and medical use space. You know, like in Michigan, we got this company I've complained about before, Green Peak, which they hide behind a brand called SkyMint. Um, they owe some people in your country, P, $150 million. Somehow they've been operating and buying all these businesses up and buying the mom and pop dispensaries and all their competition. And then now it comes out that they owe millions and millions and millions of dollars. And because we're not federally legal, they can't go bankrupt. So they got to just bite the bullet, take care of it and somehow pay that bill. And it just shows that a lot of these people came in and, and they messed the game up for the good people, the good growers, the community. Now we've got mass amounts of remediated outdoor mids that's put out there and just trash product. And it's super, super cheap. So then the quality growers who have stuff that's on point, they unfortunately can't get any traction because no one's going to pay this price. And everyone's just looking at a logical fallacy of THC and the cost for the Z. But at the same time, it's one of those situations where as things drop, it it stabilizes and you're able to find more traction for some of these quality brands, but it's just, is reeducating the market and it's expensive and it's tough. So you got to deal with uh, a lot of hurdles in this space. And I can't imagine for like a new growth store, you know, if that's going to come out and someone's going to do that because all these other brands have just screwed it up. They've popped up on every other corner. I mean, for, from when medical started until the last couple of years, there was so many growth stores. It, it was just insane. And then now it's gotten to the point where you're seeing less and less and less. And maybe that'll be a good thing, just like dispensaries. Maybe it'll be a good thing. Maybe the consumer will win. But the problem is, is we have to drive to these places now and we have to to pay more money, essentially, because there is less competition. Hopefully the quality can increase, whether it be, you know, for customer service and, and supply or that be for, you know, production for herb and the dispensary. But it just seems like it's shifting. That stabilization is coming and, and there's that rush is gone. But now it's a... a like rush to stabilization. Who can get to the point where we find the right traction, we find the right price point, we find the right process, and and really get it down. You know. Yeah, I get it, and I, you know, I could see, a, I could see a day where it's like, I, I won't grow, I or don't grow anymore. I could see a day, like I, like I, out of doing it out of therapy and passion, sure, but not to supply myself with product. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to keep a guy smoking twenty four seven. You know, and so that's. You know, the it, you, 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 someday there's going to become a trade off. I see it where it's like it, the reward to just go and get really good. Like, I don't brew my own beer, man. I really don't. I'm, I really enjoy a Corona on a really hot as balls day. That's just the way it is. Someday I will see it where there'll be just really good flour that I know I can rely on and get. That quality Northern Lights, that quality Gorilla Glue, that quality, you name it, you name it. It's going to come to a point where it's stabilized enough that I'm getting it from here, getting it from there. That's the day I see. I see it. I see it because people say it's not possible, but I do. I do see that where, you know, you can get that same, same product no matter where. That, that, that Big Mac appeal we've had a conversation about before. Yeah, that drops on uh, Sunday, actually. Uh, Yeah, I feel like prices would need to drop a lot for that, for me, at least, because like the savings is just so astronomical right now, growing your own versus buying from a dispensary, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess the dispensary, if there was like a dollar a gram price at the dispensary, which is going to be highly unlikely, right? I don't think, 
who knows if we'll see that. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. uh, it would have to drop significantly. I mean, even if, even if it was five dollars a gram, I could still grow my own. That's way too much. Save money, you know. So, but maybe you're right, P. Maybe the prices will drop like crazy, and will be high quality stuff at that cheaper price in the future. Because the reason the re like you're saying it, we can grow it our own for an a, 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 an incredible savings. That's because the markup is stupid. I've always said the idea that $10 a gram, are you kidding me? Like that's unsustainable. That's unsustainable. It's going to come to a point where it's less than a dollar a gram. It has to be. It has to be because we can do it at home for that. Well, and I think now that I'm, I'm off of the sidelines and into the mix, I think the reason why a lot of places charge what they do even still to this day is because in some states you got up to a 50% tax. And you can't write off a lot of stuff. And especially when it goes into the dispensary, they're like labor and a lot of things that you could write off in other places, you can't write off as expenses. I mean, you're literally going to be giving about 50% of your money to the government. So it's an, I wouldn't say it's a necessary evil, but it's just like how weed maps holds people over the barrel. Local governments hold them over the barrel. Like it's going to start with us voting and paying attention to the, the policies and what's going on and, and how it's affecting these businesses and then holding them accountable. Because when we know they're not being charged and gouged for these fees and these licensing fees, and they're still charging this, sweet motherfucker, I know you're lying. And this I is why you're lying. the legacy market will forever thrive. Because yep. there are no bullshit taxes. There's no bullshit regulations. There's none, of, there's none of that. There's just man with flour, man with money. Done. Done. And then, of course, it, it, like over, I, do you guys remember when it was fifth, like way, way back? Do you guys remember when it was $15 a gram? Yeah, oh, dude, I remember twenty dollars a gram. Twenty five dollars a gram, bro. I don't. I uh, remember. Oh, I remember fifty. Not for me, 50 I, mean, I, I, I was a late bloomer. You guys smoked way earlier than me. So, so like through through the free market, the price went down. The price was continuously going or like continuing to drop, and then the legal market came around, and they were like, "Okay, well, boom, we're gonna drop it significantly." Like, I'm not gonna. I I, I can't tell you where to go, but it's like the 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 prices for legacy product good legacy product are are perfect like they're they're where they should be when you can like i said quad a i don't know if that's a fire. standard fire flower fire, fire flower me and trey just talked about this yesterday on the ride back from work other than like three or four cultivars that we've had from franklin fields there's nothing that compares to homegrown it just right. isn't it's small right. batch and, and it could be commercial but it has to be small batch, everything small batch. Like we've had testers that came through of just four or five cultivars, slappers. We've grown them at scale, eh, not as good. You know, I think really what it boils down to is like, when you grow at home, you don't have those, those hindrances. You can grow for 13 weeks if you want to. You can change up everything. You're not sitting there having a quota that you have to hit. You don't have a massive amount of taxes. You don't have all these things, so you can get the best version. Like the most refined, best version of whatever you want from that to rosin. But when you look at things like uh, maybe infused drinks or nano activated gummies, things like that, maybe you don't get that at home. Maybe that's a dispo thing. But flour, that's the most simple version. I don't see the future having bulk flour. I see the future having pre rolls, pre done for you, and everything else is distilled, refined extracts. But otherwise, like you can grow flour at home. That shit's easy. Everything else, some of that's complicated. A yep. live hash rosin that's going to take a lot of work you know and that's to do that at home you can or you could just go buy a little bit once in a while from the dispo but again flour we're talking flour it's it's easy. it doesn't make any sense but if you don't have the capability to grow you live in an apartment you don't have an ac infinity set up to keep everything quiet sound and good you may want to consider just having the dispo but the price point is still ridiculous we're lucky here in michigan it's not so bad but you deal with often when you go the name of it doesn't matter circling back to where we said before people rename the stuff they'll say they got this but it's not that it'll be old ass flour it'll be remediated it'll be sun grown and all these things and the bud tenders have no clue if you got a good plug aka a good bud tender yeah you'll get something good you know but the issue that i see is a lot of times they're just not educated they're just retail employees well the disco you gotta remember the dispo can't make it go from the plant to your palate there is a million hands in between. That's the difference. Every hand that gets in, terpenes are just... You know what I mean? Anytime someone else can smell that plant, 
Those are terpenes that aren't. Yeah, and you know, the the cool thing is, I know in Las Vegas, one of the dispensaries I know of that they actually are t- temperature controlled is their back room where they store everything. Not all dispensaries are like that, and they they must be losing a ton of terpenes just from storing in a temperature of like. 75 80 degrees fahrenheit you know but uh all the good dispensaries out here they're trying to conserve those terpenes so all their stuff is stored in the back room that's temperature controlled that around i think it's around 60 degree fahrenheit so Hardeen seemed to do that room temperature dashed way in the like they had display stuff and then they had to go somewhere else to get the shit and i think that that's probably yep. i mean i think look it'll be meat. standard once look at once meat these, you know we'll look you at the meat can troll like People are going to become educated in this space about terpenes, about preservation of terpenes, about preservation of cannabinoids, about how important not remediating your shit is, um, about all these things that really only the hardcore consumers know. Only those of us who consume on a regular basis know. Problem is, a lot of the people with big money just aren't consumers like that. They're, they're light consumers, if any, at all. So then they're the decision makers. They're looking at black and white numbers. They're looking at profit loss statements. They're not thinking about the real effect of what the people are looking for. And if they would, they'd see, this is why we all love the plant so much. This is why it's got such a a heavy passion for it. But when you take that away, it just is a commodity and it can be cheap and it can just be easily sought after. And I see why people wouldn't grow because they're like, man, I can't get rid of shit. My buddy's buying these Z's of garbage for 40 now. It's like, okay, so there, but do you want to smoke those Z's of garbage for 40? Because I sure don't. I'm going to keep growing my own. Like, I don't see myself ever stopping. If anything, I see it fully automating, especially switching to just doing fully organic. Like I'm barely in the garden right now as it is because I've got all automatic everything for the most part other than in veg. So it's really, really, really easy. So the more you simplify it, the the less labor hours you put into it, the less cost it is, the easier it is to maintain and not just like, oh yeah, that's right. I got a garden. You know, even going and getting a greenhouse from the backyard, you know, like it's just simplifying the process. Yeah, what a conversation. We, uh, for those that are tuning in on YouTube, we're actually live on Twitch. We got a whole gang of people in the chat right here that have been hanging out, chatting along with us, kind of letting us know their thoughts and opinion as we record this live. Uh, so head on over to twitch.tv slash from the stash. Hang out with us sometime. Just about every Thursday, we are here live, hanging out with y'all, recording these episodes. And uh, yeah, come on and hang out with us in the future. Yeah, there's, there's, stuff, there's stuff over there that you won't see over here um yeah i'll leave it at that so make sure you come join us twitch.tv slash from the stash yeah that was uh yeah, that was a heck of a conversation i i do you think they're ever going to come a point where the legal market can keep up or are we talking like, of course it has to in my opinion of course it has to but what are we five years 10 years 15 years 20 years how long did prohibition last per state did, it's different when, per province it's different yeah that's right that's right so i don't see mso's doing it why? There's no money in getting it, right? It's weird. Do you have? Do they call them MPOs up there? Since it's federally legal, it's just a yeah. uh, internet or it's a national brand. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that would just be it. It would just be. And I'm sure there's a technical name for it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the sh- m- most of the companies around here are American owned, <laughs> and they yeah, just operate that. across the entire country. Yeah, so it's like none of them are. Yeah, they're multi multinational corporations. I think it's. Well, the more they tap into this community ethically and the more they work with people who are doing the right thing. Like when I started at Franklin Fields, we had not many people who were really about it. And now I, I don't know many who aren't like we've tightened up. We've got some real team players. We got some people who are about that, that action. So it really changed the game for all of us. I'm, I'm excited to, to see where the market's going, you know? Yep. Me too. Yeah. So should we talk about it on Twitch or what? I'm down. Let's I always do like to talk about it. Yeah, guys, uh, as, we, as, as we mentioned, uh, we're live every single uh, Thursday on Twitch. Uh, we're going to uh, about it. So uh, <laughs> we got to get out of here. You know what I mean? But thanks for watching. Uh, on behalf of myself, Mr. Grow It, ROBCL TV, and uh, the man behind the scenes that you never see too often, but boy, does he look good, uh, Mr. Wink himself. This is from the stash. Take it easy, guys.